Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part three of making your own character generator application with Comfy UI. In this video, we are going to continue where we left off last time, making an advanced version with an optional remove background option. Let's get started. I'm going to simply remove the background from the character. And for that, I'm going to go into the manager, install custom nodes. At the top, you can search for Bria. And then I will be using this Comfy UI Bria AI dash remove background custom node. You can also use the REM BG. There are multiple versions of it. I'm going to double click and search for Bria. There are two nodes. One is for the model. The other one is basically going to remove the node. The model goes into the Bria node and then the image goes into the Bria node as well. And then this node is going to output an image and a mask. For the mask to see it, you can convert the mask to an image and then pass it over to a save node or a preview node. And this is how it's going to look. This one has a background and it's going to be the main image that will be displayed in our application. And then the user will get an option to remove the background. And our application is going to connect, disconnect the Bria section. So if I were to do this manually, I have to select all of them and then press Control B to bypass it, or I can press Control M to mute it. And this is what we are going to do. We are basically going to disconnect and connect the nodes inside of a Python code. Now, since I have a new workflow, I will click on the save API format. Now inside the project, again, just copy and paste the workflow in. And if we go down to examine the workflow, we should see the new nodes that we've added. So in my case, it is this Bria node here. Then we have the mask to image. We have a couple of save nodes. I'm going to create a new file, advanced.py. And in this file, I'm just going to copy everything that is inside the intermediate in it. And I'm going to use this as a base to work with. Again, just make sure that your image has the correct name. So for me, I'm going to change the name to advanced input image dot jpeg you can choose any name and in your advanced.py make sure that you're saving the input image using the exact same name now next make sure that you're updating the json file that you're opening so in my case it is advanced workflow dot json everything can stay the same next we have to go into main.py then just update the import statement so we are going to say from advanced import and I have to go back to advanced.py and change the radio interface name to let's just say advanced. And then in the tab interface, we'll add this advanced section. In the tab names, I'm going to give it the name advanced workflow and we can test. I'm going to start the application. So I've added the same prompt image as well as the image weight. Click on submit. It's queuing processing. So we know that our workflow got connected inside of Comfy UI. In the queue, I can see that it's running. And here we go. We got three images. So going back to the workflow, we have one, two, and three. All three are showing in the application. So we have the one with a background, one without the background, and then this one is just a mask. Now, what I want to do is to have an option somewhere like a checkbox to remove the background. So by default, the application is going to generate only one image. And then once the user found the image that they want, they can check the box to remove a background and then they will get this uh, character without the background and then the mask that one's going to be for debugging purposes so for that we need to know how to connect and disconnect nodes from code now let me go back to comfy ui really quickly let's make as if i want to disable this section here so one way to do it is to just disconnect these save nodes. In Comfy UI, when there is a section of the workflow which do not have an output node, so in this case, the image from these do not connect to an output node, Comfy UI will not generate a new image. So if I change the seed here and click on generate, you can see that these are highlighted red and Comfy UI will just give me an image here. 
in code, we have to do the reverse. So instead of thinking that this node is not connected to a save node like this, we'll instead think of the save image node is not connected to the input node. It can get quite confusing because you have to think in reverse. However, once you understand this part, it's actually quite easy. So let's go back to the advanced underscore workflow.json and let's go all the way down. We can see that we have this mask to image and this mask to image node, it's connected. So this section here is the connection. It's connected by a mask to a node of ID 43. So going back to Comfy UI, we have this mask to image. This one, it's connected to this node by this mask here, okay? So 46 is connected to 43 with this mask. And this is what we are seeing here. So node 46 is connected to 43 by the mask here. At this stage here, we are opening the workflow. And then in here, we are converting this JSON data into a Python dictionary. So let me illustrate something. I've opened up a terminal and let's make as if I have this Python dictionary. Okay, so I have ID number 39 connecting to the ID 36 by this images. Okay, so this is going to be my dictionary. Now, right now it is connected because we have this section here. In order to disconnect it, all we need to do is to remove this key value pair. And inside of dictionary, the way to do it is to say del and then temp. Now we just have to look for the structure. So first we are going to access ID 39 as a string. And then we need to go into inputs. And what is the key that we want to remove? It's called images. Pressing enter, there's no error. But now if we look back at temp, the dictionary no longer has this key value pair. So right now what we've done is simulate disconnecting the new. If we want to connect it back, we'll just say temp 39 inputs images equals to, and now we need to get this, which is a list. So we have a list inside the list. It's the ID that we want to connect it to, in this case, 36, and then we're going to pass zero. And then if we look at temp once again, it's connected. So all we've done is this section here where we say Dell, we've disconnected it. And this section here where we are assigning a key and a value, we are connecting it. So in code here, that is all that we need to do. So first, let's go all the way down and inside my inputs, I'm going to add a checkbox, give it a label. I'm going to say remove background. This checkbox is going to return true or false. So at the process function, I'm going to capture it and let's just say remove BG. Now where we have these modification, where we are modifying the workflow just below it, we can do a check. So we can say if remove BG. So this will return true. If remove BG here is checked. If it is not checked, it will be false. So right here we have true. So if it is true, we need to connect the node. So let's go back to the workflow. Now I'm going to go back to Comfy UI just to check the IDs. So this node will connect here and this one will connect here. So what I need to look for is 44 connecting to 43 and then 45 connecting to 46. So basically 44 and 45 is what I need. I have 44 here and Maybe to make it easier, I'm going to do the split the screen. Okay, this way you will be able to see uh, the other side. Now, remember when I was doing the terminal, I was using temp. That was just the variable name that I signed. But right now we've loaded the data inside a prompt dictionary. So we have to say prompt and then access 44 and then go into inputs here. Inside inputs, we have images. This images needs to be a list. Inside the list, the first index is going to be 43 and then it's connecting to the index zero. So right now we've made a connection. I'm going to duplicate it and do the same for 45. So 45 
inputs images, the same thing. It's going to connect to 46 and then that's it. Now else, so if the user did not select remove background, I want to disconnect it. So I'm just going to copy these two lines, remove the assignments. And then at the beginning, I will simply add Dell. So basically deleting this key from the workflow. Okay, this is it. Let's close the previous radio application and run a new version in the browser refresh and this time we we'll have this checkbox remove background okay i have the same prompt same image and image weight is the same but this remove background checkbox is unchecked clicking on submit what i'm expecting to happen is to get only one image because these two are disconnected right now so it's like this okay as you can see i've got one image now let's make as if this is the image i wanted to have i can click on the remove background option click on submit once again okay so now we have three images one we have the background the background is white so if you look this section here we have white and then this one do not have a background hopefully it's visible when i'm doing this so you can see one has a background and the other one do not and then we have the mask at the end okay so now you know everything in order to make your own application and here's a demo of an application i've built using the same method so instead of a positive prompt, I just have a couple of drop downs. So let me do, let me just select a couple of options here. And you can see that these options, they are for the character. So it's going to, to basically make a character. And then here, you see that I have a use input image and then enforce white background. But because these are optional, I do not have to add an image or select any of the boxes. I'm going to click on generate and the application is automatically going to construct the positive prompt based on these options here. Now in this particular version, this is just a demo. I did not add a slider to control the intensity. So for example, let's say I really wanted this character's hair to be red. In my application, I can just add a slider to control the weight of that particular text. Um, that's something that you can definitely add to your application. Now, as you can see, I've selected these options. I got a character and right now you can see we do not have a white background. So if I click on this white background option, click on generate, I get the same image. This is the original one. This one is cut out. It's the background removed. I have a white background that was generated and then it basically take this this version where the background is removed, overlay it on top of the white background and then we have the character on a white background. Now, additionally, I can use this use input image and this one is for the IP adapter and let's make as if I want the same image but uh, in a different race. So let me say uh, a vampire and let's just say 60%. I've disabled the enforced white background and right now it's going to use this image and try to generate another character but with a vampire race. So pretty much similar and this one it's it's more of a vampire vibe. Now again I can do the enforced white background background and got this character on a white background instead of this studio background. So here we go, right? Now you can play around, you can add additional options. It depends on your workflow. For me, I'm going to stop here. But like I said, you can add sliders, you can add drop downs, you can even add radio buttons. If you do not want to use these drop downs, you can add radio buttons as well. Definitely check the radio documentation or the different components which you can use. All right. That is it for this video. If you're seeing this outro right now, thank you very much. Your support means a lot. In the next video, I'm going to go back to Comfy UI explaining workflows. There were a couple of new custom nodes which got released, the installation, how to use them and workflows. All right. Thank you for watching until the very end and I will see you in the next one.